We told you it's a big day in the Supreme Court. It is hearing the first arguments in a challenge to the president's health care law. The case and the high court could have a major impact on the race for the White House. President Obama is not the only one with a lot at stake here. The GOP candidates, specifically Rick Santorum, are making repeal of that law a central issue in their campaigns. Santorum especially paints Mitt Romney as the guy who put the plan together on the controversial law when he was governor of Massachusetts. Listen. This has been the focal point of our campaign because uh, I, I think if you look at 75% of the American public opposes Obamacare and its mandate, and Governor Romney was the author of the mandate in Massachusetts and advocated for that mandate at the federal level. He advocated for what we're now in front of the uh, Supreme Court saying is unconstitutional. Again, uh, just Governor Romney, I mean, he's, he's a good man and uh, has a lot of, uh, a lot of strengths. But his singular weakness is the singular biggest issue in this race, and it's the singular best opportunity to take it to Barack Obama. Joining us now, Gretchen Hamill, executive director of Public Notice, a nonprofit group focusing on fiscal issues, also a former spokeswoman for the House Republican Conference. Also with us, Chris Hahn, former aide to Democratic Senator Charles Schumer and a Fox News contributor. Gretchen, I wonder if Santorum's argue miss, argument misses the mark in this way. He says, you know, uh, Romney, Governor Romney set up essentially a smaller version of Obamacare, and we Republicans are arguing that Obamacare is unconstitutional. But the argument against its constitutionality is that the federal government can't compel states to do something. If he set it up in one state only, does that argument miss the mark? Yeah, it does miss the mark, but the fact is, is we had to spend so much time just explaining that just now, and the American people really, it won't resonate with them. What does resonate with them is the fact that the government is becoming more and more involved in their daily lives, and the American public has already rejected this, so despite what the Supreme Court rules or says about this, the public has made up their mind. Yeah, Chris, the public, if, if you look at the polls, the public uh, is not too thrilled with Obamacare. Well, you know, they're not thrilled with the overall package, but when you break it down into its individual components, they overwhelmingly support all of them. They just don't understand the issue yet, and they will as it becomes more and more part of their lives in the coming years. I don't believe the Supreme Court's going to strike it down, and whether it does or it doesn't, it's too late for Rick Santorum. Rick Santorum's political career was over in 2006. He's basically Bruce Willis in the sixth sense. His career has been dead for a long time. He just doesn't know it. And when this decision's made in June, whether it goes against Obamacare or for it, it's not going to affect him either way. It is helpful for Mitt Romney, though, because it might take the issue off the table if it's done. And if it is actually settled in favor of support of this law, it actually will settle the country on this. The American people still trust the Supreme Court more than it does some of the other branches of government. And if they see the Supreme Court says that this is constitutional, the American people will agree that, All right. that it is. Gretchen, what about that? If the Supreme Court were to find this constitutional, does that help President Obama in his re-election effort? No, let's back up. It does not help President Obama at all that the fact that the Supreme Court is even talking about this today. That is why President Obama has been silent on this. That's why in his 17-minute documentary, it was barely even mentioned. This is a counterpiece of his whole time in office, and he doesn't even talk about it. That shows that it is a political loser for him and not something that he wants to talk about going into his reelection because it cost House Democrats their leadership well, role yeah, well, back in 2010. Well, Chris, what about right. that? I mean, the president calls this the signature achievement of, of his term in office to this point. Why isn't he talking about it more? You know, I think he is talking about it more. I think it will be part of the campaign. Is that why he's in North Korea or South Romney, Korea? Is there, if, Mitt Romney, if Mitt Romney is the, is the nominee for president in the fall, how is he going to say he's going to repeal the bill that basically he is responsible for creating? He is no, 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 the no. grandfather, the godfather, the, the <laughs> author of it, him and the Heritage Foundation, and people like you, Gretchen, and think tanks around, Republican think tanks, came up with this bill. Now, all of a sudden, it's socialism. By the way, this does not turn health care over to the government. It requires the private sector to set a certain standard, and it requires Americans to acknowledge the fact that they are mortal and they will need health care in their lifetime and to pay for it so that their neighbors don't have to pay for it for them. All right, Gretchen, let me ask you the reverse of the political question I asked you earlier. If this thing gets smacked down in part or in whole by the Supreme Court, does that give the uh, Republicans opportunity to say, see, we told you so? Oh, 
Oh, it absolutely does. I mean, the Republicans will then have this huge rallying cry going into November to talk about this. But, you know, we are still debating to this day laws that have been passed or things that have been upheld by the Supreme Court over the course of the past decades and centuries. This will not go away. The American public do not approve of this. And despite the, you know, PR that Chris is giving all the organizations on the right, this was not crafted by them. This was crafted by President Obama, it was. House Democrats, it was and by the Senate Heritage Democrats. Foundation no, and it, Mitt Romney. Yeah. You know what? Keep the you know, yes. That yes. Is, you can't say that is a blanket label for everyone sure on the can. right. It's, it's a the heritage same. foundation. Have you read both? Have no. you read both no, bills? Not. Have you read Romneycare and Obamacare? Um, the oh, same excuse exact. me. It excuse is, me. Is, is, I would give you a I lot of credit if you've read that bill right, because right. not even Speaker Nancy Pelosi read the worth bill. Worth pointing out that the Massachusetts legislature did make a lot of changes to the law as uh, Governor Romney that Governor Romney then and he then signed Governor Romney wanted to pass. He signed it. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. He signed it in Faneuil Hall with Ted Kennedy standing behind him, and he was very proud of it, and he should be proud of it because it was a major <laughs> yeah. achievement, probably the biggest Chris, achievement this of his career. All right, well, we got to leave it to say goodbye. It's great talking to you both. You're fired up on a Monday morning. Chris Hahn, Gretchen <laughs> Hamill, thank you both. Nice to have you. Got to have a healthy thank debate, right? Yes, We're we also do. doing that on.